Welcome back to Crit and Crit. I am Axiom. I'm Sit. And we are continuing through Mario Adventure and our discussion of Puss in Boots by Charles Perrault. So, um, one of the major things that the plot hinges on is the fact that the youngest son has been given very, very little in his inheritance from his already poor father who could only say like three things for his children. But still, the youngest kind of got last pig, it seems like. I mean, that's yeah. usually how it's depicted? Correct. Starting off to a great start today. Yep. I will get through this level sooner or later. I'm getting a Game Grumps vibe of, okay, five more tries. <laughs> but yeah, this is fairly common in fairy tales. Um, the oldest usually gets the best inheritance, then, you know, four more tries. I mean, we just have to keep trying. I have nowhere else to go. This, this stage blocks off the entire rest of the world. <laughs> I mean, it looks like you're having a blast. No word, why? At least there's no lives in this game. Anyway, back to the story. Yeah. And this is actually something you see not just in this fairy tale, but in others as well. Um, <sighs> the oldest gets the best, the, the first pick, the best of everything. And on the other hand, the youngest tends to have some sort of, like, attribute that gets them through things. Uh, it kind of became a joke in, um, I don't know if anybody remembers this webcomic except me, uh, No Rest for the Wicked, which was a, a fairy tale mashup, and actually Puss in Boots was a major character in it before the thing just, you know, stopped updating. Um, and it was a running joke in there of just like, so what do you know about this princess? Well, she's a youngest, and then they just do finger guns because everybody knows, like, the youngest princess is the most attractive of them. <laughs> At least in that world. But, yeah, uh, I believe this is due to just, this is kind of how inheritance was when most of these stories were being written, due to a system of primogeniture. Okay, first come, first served. The oldest gets the first pick. Oldest is going to take on the family business. The oldest is expected to, etc., etc., etc. And I think to some extent, like, I, we've moved on from this overall as a society, but, like, if you are an oldest child, you kind of feel like there's more responsibility for you than for your younger siblings. And there's usually a higher emphasis on, uh, you know, the oldest <laughs> doing well. Do you think it carries over to Mario and Luigi? Because, I mean, like, people talk about Mario all the time, but Luigi's just kind of the forgotten younger brother. I mean, yes, in a sense, because, uh... Oh, okay, it's not slippery. <coughs> uh, Mario does take the lead in pretty much everything uh, the family does. Uh, the only time... The only exceptions to this are explicit spinoffs, like... Luigi's Mansion. Which is odd to me because, well, if we're talking about like just the uh, family role thing, birth order, Luigi gets treated more like a middle child, so who's the youngest? Toad. I have several questions and I don't really want the answers. I was being sarcastic anyway. Um, he does actually kind of... No, I hadn't thought of it. But yeah, I can see the comparison between Luigi and kind of that, uh, middle child, uh, nobody pays attention to them, they just do whatever, um, they always get the, the short end of the millennial, short Millennials end of the and Boomers screaming at each other while Gen X is like, yeah, we're here too, you know. Yeah, um, what would you, how would you describe, uh, uh, the youngest child in this regard. It, it's the, uh, they have this uh, special uniqueness to them, they're often forgotten about, or uh, not often forgotten about, that's the middle child. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, 
I don't know if there's a character like that in Mario. I kind of... There's a part of me that wants to say Wario. Because, uh... He's kind of got the... I'm a little spoiled. I'm greedy. I'm gonna get my way. Uh, but I'm always competing with... With Mario, who... Gets the stuff I feel I deserve. Actually... In that case, I would say that Wario is the oldest and Mario is the, is the youngest favorite. This like is a silly anyone who has <laughs> Yeah, anyone who has younger siblings know that, like, you have all the expectation, but they get spoiled rotten. Yep. But, yeah. Anyway, um, in the story, this manif the whole primogeniture thing manifests because uh, Dad can only give them the mill the donkey, and the cat. So the oldest gets the mill, the middle child gets the donkey, and the youngest gets the cat. And the youngest uh, notices, like, well, the first two can work together because you can use the donkey to run the mill, and they can at least have something resembling a functional business and a chance of making enough money to feed themselves. I have a fucking cat. What am I going to do with this? Which, <coughs> I have something to say on that, but I'll get to that later because it's a bit long-winded. Oh, go ahead. Those older brothers are doomed. So, I'm going to make a series of assumptions here based on the text. And yes, I know the actual answer is, it's a fairy tale, don't think about it that hard. But, allow me a few moments. So, the story opens with the, with the father dying, and being so poor as to only be able to offer one thing apiece to his sons as inheritance. The eldest gets the mill, the father's business. The middle child gets the donkey, and the youngest child gets the, gets the cat. Given that the point of the story is that the father is poor and that the uh, middle that the youngest child is not going to be able to survive on his inheritance, it's safe to um, assumption number one is that the father is otherwise completely destitute. Assumption number two: the two older brothers do as the youngest surmised and combine their inheritances to keep the mill business going and to try and make a living off of it. And assumption three, which is helpful to my point but not necessary, the brothers will want to eventually do as their sibling did and marry and have kids of their own. The father was supporting himself and three sons supporting an Air quotes. Uh, why did that happen? Um, off of what he managed to make from the mill. And that was barely enough to provide himself enough to give his sons a proper inheritance. And he was otherwise destitute. Oh, that's a dirty trap. Oh no, I have to go that way. But I have to be small. That's annoying. Um, so, what what do the brothers think they're going to be able to do with that? They are going to be trying to run a mill business that was clearly not successful even when their father ran it. Oh, there's no blockade over here. Good grief. That is a trap. Um. And as soon as the brothers get married, that's going to put them in the exact same position. Four people trying to survive off of... Uh, two brothers, two wives. Trying to survive off of a mill that is clearly not making enough money for these people to make a living off of, and as soon as kids are involved, that just makes things even worse. There are only... <laughs> as far as I can tell... Ugh! There are only three possible outcomes to this. One... Some... or Three positive outcomes, let me clarify. 
One, some miraculous change in their economic fates results in the brothers being able to actually make a living from the mill. Something drastic or supernatural or heroic happens for them that allows the mill to function in a way that will be enough for the two of them and their eventual families to survive off of. Option two, they lean on the charity of their younger brother, who is now a wealthy lord, and he provides for them, and that allows them to survive, Temp either temporarily until such time as the mill allows them to uh, to actually make a living. I knew that was going to happen. Or just he provides for them in perpetuity as a noble. Or option three, the cat schemes on their behalf. And we end up with a Puss in Boots part two, where the cat is doing shenanigans on behalf of the older brothers. Starring Antonio Banderas. <laughs> we were gonna make a Shrek joke eventually, come on. I was surprised we hadn't already. I was being good. I mean, we don't really know the circumstances. You could probably you could probably theorize that the mill mill might be failing just because their father is sick. So that could be the reason. But anyway, we're kind of focusing more on, you know, the whole what do you do with your inheritance and what if you don't get inheritance situation. Right. When clearly and many fairy tales focus on how can you become worthy of this inheritance, etc., 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 implying that it is basically a necessary thing to get by. So, they basically expect, and I am so sorry for this, your hero to somehow walk away with a small loan of a million dollars by the end of it. So... Yep, either they become... Yep. A high-ranking, wealthy, noble, rich hero. They loot the dragon's hoard and find all of the money. Or they gain a wealthy inheritance. But yeah, this basically kind of tell this basically tells you like in fairy tale world, even just like in reality, if you don't have a steady source of money from somewhere, you're not gonna have a good time. Which is probably not the intended message, but it's the one they pulled off. I mean, yeah, it's a realistic our, message. And that's honestly something I think people tend to forget with fairy tales, is many of these are more or less morality tales to get kids to behave. Like, Beauty and the Beast, which we'll probably handle at some point or other, is your arranged marriage isn't going to be that bad, ladies, you can fix it. Hansel and Gretel is, look, I know you're, you don't always get along with your parents, but food's tight right now, so sometimes you're just going to have to suck it up. And so on and so forth. Like Cinderella, look, if you're nice and patient and just put up with all this crap, eventually your life's going to get better, okay? Yep. They're really depressing when you look at them that way, but you know, That's... sometimes it'd be that way. Uh, to quote Thomas Hobbes, life is by design. Oh, that's a dirty trap. Uh, oh, no, it looks pretty clean with all the bubbles. Uh, nasty, brutish, and short. And one must simply endure the cruelties of this life and usually uh, insert some comment here about afterlife of your choice. And the expectation is, no, it's not going to be nice. There, the world is not going to be happy. You're going to suffer and be unhappy and existence, uh, life is pain. 
Anyone who tells you otherwise is selling something. I'm just gonna go with good place here. Birth is a curse and existence is prison. You have your references, I, I have mine. We do not get to quote the good place nearly enough. We don't. Do I get to quote, uh... Good place now that I'm throwing fireballs? I guess. I mean, I never stopped you. <laughs> Threw a Molotov, and then I had a different problem. Oh, boy. But, yeah, to this no end, like... <laughs> The youngest in this regard, his main quality, as seems to be the case with the princesses I mentioned in the running joke earlier, um, his quality seems to be he looks good wet. Because that's when the princess first meets him. That's his, he doesn't really have any special skills other than can be obedient to house cat. I'm not sure I would let that qualify you for, like, anything in most places. If you're taking instructions from somebody who spends all day sleeping in the sun and then running, doing, getting zoomies at 2 in the morning, I think your life has gone wrong some, at some point. But, you know, that's just me. And what does my opinion matter? I was but, about to say, we have a dog who does similar. Not at 2 in the morning, she doesn't. I don't know. I remember a few incidents. Anyway. Mostly she doesn't. But, yeah, my point is, many fairy tales want to build up, like, you need this certain special talent or quality or willingness to, to stick to something. Our, our, hum our youngest here lacks that. His only quality is, has cat, can, can follow basic instruction. And cause it's more about the cat than him. But he gets rewarded by marrying a princess and becoming a marquis. Through fraud, no doubt. No less, because, obviously, <laughs> who's what's gonna a, say What's, a, gonna what's a little fraud between master and pet? If your pet is telling you to commit identity theft, you should probably not listen. I don't know, Mario and Yoshi get along. Considering how many times Mario just drops Yoshi off of a cliff... <laughs> I'm not sure they're the best example of a healthy pet owner relationship. I'm, a... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not actually that sorry. <coughs> anyway, go ahead. You were saying. But yeah, it's it kind of sends a really wrong message of like the only way to get ahead in life is to have a guy who's willing and able to break the rules on your side who is willing to basically give you any alibi you need. Like, is that- and you don't actually have to have anything resembling a skill, you just have to look good and keep your mouth shut. So, your brothers, who are now, you know, because they got the quote, good inheritance, will have to work their, their butts off forever with would, would theoretically would, they, would have been their, uh, a good living for any of them, while their youngest, who I'm wondering maybe if their dad gave him the cat because uh, you don't hurt yourself in the mill, because honestly, milling was a dangerous job at the time. Yep. Not Explosions just you, happened. I was about to say, not just could you get caught in the machinery and lose a finger or three, you could uh, kick up a spark and all of the loose flour and uh, dust in the air would cause a fireball. Yep. So, yeah, um... I guess- Ow. So this basically just tells you, according to Puss in Boots, the way in life to get ahead is to be endearingly incompetent and have people clean up after you. So... I'm not sure that it sends a good message. I'm not sure if that's intentional. I don't know what it had in mind. But, uh... It ain't good. Well, let's look at the morals. You, your version of the book, uh, I listened to an audiobook when we were preparing for this that just ended with uh, the youngest marries the princess and they live happily after, and the cat becomes well, yeah, the a is... minor lord. Uh, but yours ended with morals. Yeah, and it doesn't even follow its own moral, because the first moral is, there is great advantage in receiving a large inheritance, but diligence and ingenuity are worth more than wealth acquired from others. But the sun doesn't display any of this. Uh, the no, cat the cat does. does. <laughs> yeah, so, 
how is this meant to be a lesson? Because the son, who received the inheritance, doesn't do anything. He just has other people do things for him and benefits from it while he does literally nothing of merit the entire time. So, yeah, I'm not sure how it wants us to learn that moral. Because, theoretically, you would have the son proving that ingenuity. Like, but he doesn't. He lets the cat do it all. So, the moral doesn't hold up with itself. I don't really know what else to say here. I fell in the hole. <laughs> well, maybe you should have listened to your cat. We don't have a cat. And I I'm, know. I'm not sure Sophie would give much better advice. Anywho! Do you have anything further to add? To... <laughs> no. I was gonna say, this seems like a decent place to stop. <laughs> Since, uh, you kind of... We both kind of had our opportunity for a long spiel. Alright, we will see you all next time. Bye. Don't let your cats commit uh, identity theft.